Hello and welcome to the trade site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday the 31st of January 2016 ending Friday the 5th. I hope you had a good trading week. Here's a look at the dollar index daily chart. Not much new. It was more like down, down, down and then up on Friday. Really went nowhere for the whole week as you'll see when we look at the intraday action on some of these pairs. Uh, here's the euro dollar, just the reverse of that, of course, basically a mirror of these these days. Here's a look at the pound dollar, uh, a little more positive. We had some nice trades this week in the pound. Uh, Aussie recovered a little bit after trying to break down under that base, so the base is kind of shattered for now. Pound yen back up as well, euro yen up a little bit, so the euro and the pound recovering a bit against the yen for the week. Pound Swiss is flat as usual. Notice that 13 sell signal back in uh, November, right on top of things there for us on the uh, pound Swiss. And the New Zealand dollar also flat. So I wouldn't say it was much of a week from a trading perspective. Let's take a look at the 30 minute uh, chart of the euro dollar so we can see the total week. High to low is only uh, 170 pips. So very weak action uh, for the week on the euro dollar. And of course, you know, each day itself was like 70 pips uh, of range moving up until Thursday. And then Thursday into Friday was finally a big move down. We got the GDP number, the first look at it for the fourth quarter here in the U.S., not a great number, and the dollar uh, index got stronger on that number. Here's the pound dollar, high to low for the week here, 250 pips, which it covered all that on uh, Friday. So Monday was a little light. Tuesday had a decent move. Wednesday back the other way. Thursday up, and then Friday the big move down. So we closed out the week with a winner there, and three winners in a row, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on the pound. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We didn't really go anywhere. The ranges were light, uh, better on the pound than on the euro. That's why we made the calls there, because we could see that. Now let's take a look at the uh, economic data that's coming out this next week, see what we need to be aware of. Uh, so it's the first week of February, right? On Sunday, we've got uh, New Zealand visitor arrivals, AIG manufacturing index, China manufacturing PMI, and non-manufacturing PMI. Same thing out of Japan. Going into Monday, Australia's got their commodity prices at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Spanish manufacturing PMI. We've got the manufacturing PMI out of Spain, Switzerland, all of Europe, Italy, Germany, France. Then uh, the U.K. afterwards, money supply out of the U.K. Here in the U.S., core PC, price index, and personal income and spending. Not a big deal. Manufacturing PMI out of Canada and then the U.S. We've got construction spending as well here in the U.S., a uh, couple speeches, loan officer survey here in the U.S., monetary base out of Japan, ANZ commodity prices out of New Zealand, Australia's cash rate, Japan 10-year bond auction, Europe's Spanish unemployment change, Swiss retail sales, German unemployment change, Italian monthly unemployment rate, construction PMI out of the U.K., Europe's got their unemployment rate and PPI, GDT price index out of New Zealand, IBD tip economic optimism out of the U.S., total vehicle sales here out of the U.S. This is all on Tuesday. Employment change Tuesday night and, and uh, labor cost index out of New Zealand. AIG services index out of Australia. Building approvals and trade balance out of Australia. A lot of stuff out of Australia Tuesday night here in the U.S. Uh, the Caxton services PMI number, that's a China, out of China. Consumer confidence out of Japan. Now we're going into Wednesday. We've got the services PMI data out of Spain, Italy, France, Germany, the broad European sector, and the UK. I love how they space them by 10 to 15 minutes each country right there to get them all out. Uh, Italian preliminary CPI and retail sales out of Europe. Economic forecasts out of Europe. And then uh, ADP non-farm employment change. That's a monthly number here in the U.S. Final services PMI and non-manufacturing PMI here in the U.S. Crude oil inventory is at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, jumping into Thursday... Consumer Climate out of Switzerland, Halifax HPI out of the UK, uh, Retail PMI out of Europe, French 10-year bond auction, that's probably not going to rock the world. UK's got their Bank of England inflation report and their rate announcement. So we had our rate announcement, now they're going to have their rate announcement on Thursday morning here in the U.S., 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Challenge of job cuts here in the U.S., unemployment claims, that's the weekly number here in the U.S., non-farm productivity, preliminary unit uh, labor costs, factory orders, natty gas, AIG, that's all in the U.S., AIG construction index out of Australia, along with their retail sales going into late uh, Thursday, early Friday, leading indicators out of Japan, German factory orders, French trade balance, Canada's got their unemployment rate and trade balance, U.S. has, now this is a big one, 
trade balance and our unemployment rate with a non-farm payroll data and then consumer credit in the afternoon. So trade balance and unemployment with the non-farm payroll, those are each of them, uh, one of our big three each month. So two of our big three in the same morning, Friday morning, which means we'll be half size ahead of that. Should be aware of the UK rate announcement if you're trading the pound dollar uh, going into Thursday. Other than that, it's a straightforward trading week. There's plenty of data, but it's none of our big stuff. And so we will be uh, full size the rest of the week. It's the beginning of February. Hope it's a profitable month for everybody. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal12. If you've not taken the trial of our services, feel free to do so. Have a great trading week.